what we do here is go back, 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 back. So let's get started on the wheels. This is what the front looks like. Um, so basically I've just jacked this up right now and I'm going to take a jack stand and stick it underneath there for safety. And uh, we have to take her off this retainer spring. Uh, get off that retainer spring, then there's two caps here you have to pop off and then you can stick in with these like octagonal wrenches to be able to release the caliper. And then we'll take the pads. So these pads, see they're, they're getting low. The sensor hasn't come on, but they're getting low. Okay, so these, these bolts take a, uh, it's like an HW7, I believe is what I was told. So in here, see if it fits. Yep. Yeah, that's it. Now, so this is it. What comes out of inside of there. And I can already see that there's some rusting on the threads there. Before I put it in, I might um, clean that off. But that's the hex seven. And it's in there. So I just took, took off the bottom. There's one here. And then there's the one up here. We'll take this off. Be ready because you don't want to hang it by this the other thing i did before i uh, started doing this i opened the hood and i took off the um, brake fluid reservoir cap so that it relieves pressure in the system just in case there's any overflowing once i move that piston start playing around with this piston here i'm gonna take this piston off in a second um so this is my bungee cord setup some people like to use zip ties but um, it's a lot of waste of plastic uh, I'm actually going to tighten it up a little better. I just hang off the spring there. Uh, no, it holds it. It holds fine. Um, this pad it has like clips that go inside of the caliper there. Be careful as you remove this not to scrape the rubber. But if you just pull up on it, it should come out. Yeah, there it is. So these things with that third one facing towards the inside of the caliper. Um, we've got to get the caliper guide off, which is these two, I believe, 21 millimeter bolts. And then once we get this caliper guide off, then we'll need some type of Torx to get that set screw out. And then this should just be come right off. And then when you're using just a hand tool to get rid of some, some seriously rusted bolts, get yourself a piece of pipe, steel pipe, put it on there. You can extend it a little bit to get some leverage and you have a makeshift breaker bar. This stuff works guys, I'm not making it up. <laughs> okay, I think this is it. So this is uh, T20, T30. This is what they look like. And uh, if you don't have one, just in case. There's a whole bunch of these things, you know, they kind of look similar. So I think that's the right one. Yep, there's very, low torque on that because it's just kind of a setting screw. If you can actually hold anything together, it's going to be held on by the wheels. You know? yeah. So, that's going to need some loving in order for it to come off. Get the hammer. Look at that. Ha! Good. Huh. Nice. Will this be the same one? Yep, always got a 
check, you never know. I like FC Piro, but you never know. Look at this. Pick W40. A little bit here. You can rush. Have new rotors. And what's cool about these is that where it normally gets rusted inside here is also protected in weather coating, rust coating, so that in here it doesn't crack or rust over time. Like if you saw the other rotor, it was completely covered in rust in here. It had rusted through and it was only a matter of time before. That's why I don't want to use that rotor, but also because of performance reasons with a nice clean disc with nice clean pads. We'll bed these in and they'll be significantly better for a lot longer than if we just didn't do the rotor. Like, look at that. See how that's deteriorating because of the rust? It's only a matter of time before, you see there's pieces in there that are already flaking off, actually. So, it's only a matter of time before there's a fracture, a stress fracture from having the metal degraded, you know, and then the thickness is one of the metrics that you should use before you change your rotors, but that's another one to think about. Is has a, are these the original rotors that don't have that type of weatherproofing inside of the vein here, inside of this like airflow chamber? Because that compromises the rest of the rotors. Okay, so we put the caliper back in, we cleaned it, scrubbed it, wiped it, put some grease. Basically, stick that in here, and I'll just keep turning this until it gets tight. Once it's tight, I can turn the top there, and it'll push that disc piston back in. Okay, you know, they were gonna get down there. Let's get this thing. Oh, one side done. We just put the pads on, tighten the backs, put the caps on. Now we've got to put the retaining clip behind it. Alright, clips back on. And uh, that's it. Now we can put the wheel back on.